So Jonathan, you got like some favorite dock lights on the lake, I guess you hit all night or or uh, if you're not fishing all night, you come out here, hit them right at dark and, and yeah. get your bait. Right at dark, yeah, trying to get some red fins, gizzard shad, preferably. Bigger gizzard shad are better. Yeah. Like There's some old gizzards right there. There you go. Nice. You gonna cut those up? You gonna use them for live bait? I'm gonna cut them. Cut them? You gonna see a big gizzard? Yeah, let's see them. Ooh. Got, got the dog in them. Good gracious. <laughs> so you, you'll you cut that up. You won't actually, you won't fish that live. No, we'll, we'll bait 10 jugs with this one. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. You got your right hand girl up there throwing the net for you? Yes, sir. Here you, Georgia West. How old are you, Georgia? 16. Been throwing a net since she's big enough to stand over that rail. That's right. That's right. She can throw it too. Gizzard. You did it again. Another big gizzard. That's awesome. So from this one dock light here, we put what five or four, five, six gizzards. I mean, so how many how many jugs is that gonna bait? Uh, we probably do twenty jugs of what we just caught. Yep. That's awesome. It's good to get free bait. Yep, free bait. So when you come out here jugging at night, you've got nothing on that one. So when you come out here jugging at night, I mean, you don't, you don't have any bait in the boat other than what you're gonna catch in that cast net. That's it. That's it. Free bait, right? Yes, sir. It's not just boat dock lights, but there's, you probably can't see it at night, but there's an area of grass that comes off a point here. Yeah, you, you can get, get your gizzards off your riprap and uh, your grass beds. Anywhere so, the water comes up from deep to shallow, yeah, they'll usually hang in there on those little bitty bait fish. That's what those gizzards are after. Those gizzards are on the smaller fry and yep. maybe some of the thread fins and and they'll hang out in the grass so the gizzards can't get to them so they'll hang on the edges ah i see that was a good throw but I still got a big old gizzard big gizzard shad all right so that's your big gizzard shad there So that's the way you cut them up. We got a little system going here. So you got some helpers back there to hand you the jug. You cutting it up, you baiting, and you throwing it in the water, huh? Yes, sir. You just hooking. That's the that's the head. You hooking it from under the lips and out the. Yes, sir. Right through that hard spot. Okay. So what size circle hook do you say that was? Uh, number seven. Number seven circle hook. Stainless steel circle hook with a seven to fifteen foot leader on that. On that okay. And you said it's that 300 pound offshore angler stuff? Yes, sir. Okay. And so I see you just all chunking, you're not running up and down the lake and trying to go every 50 feet and drop one. You just, I guess when that current goes, you said they'll, they'll just go. Well, I like to keep them tight because the more bait you got, you know, the more the fish can smell it. So I'm seeing this is kind of a family affair for you here, Jonathan. This is uh, something that you and your wife and your daughter do often, I guess. Yes, sir. You don't hardly ever go hunting or fishing without them, do you? No, I, don't, I, I mean, I never go anywhere without my wife. And she likes this uh, jugging and hunting and everything else too, is what's cool about it. Yeah, we... Well, he said to go backwards. One big happy family. Take, catch a lot of these fish and do fundraisers for the ministry. Do fish fries and feed people in the community and they donate money to the ministry. So it's a good way to get out here and make free money. So you these homemade noodles? Yes, sir. All dollar store stuff. Dollar store stuff. So how much you think you got in one noodle? Three or four dollars and a quarter. Yeah. All right, that includes the PVC, the hooks, and everything? everything. A dollar and a quarter. Yeah. They cost five ninety-seven each at Walmart. So. Yeah. I build them on a massive scale, usually one hundred and fifty at a time. Oh. Uh, 
Because you know you lose on people stealing. Yeah. You you like the deeper leaders. Yeah, I mean this is why I catch fish on. Yeah. When I go to a different lake like O'Connor and I'm gonna fish shallow water, I'll I'll roll them up and fish, you know, two to five feet. But when I'm fishing the channel, I want to go seven to ten. Okay. Fifteen. Is that what we're targeting tonight? So is a main creek channel here? Yeah, we'll working the channel, waiting on the full water. So we're dead in the creek channel and, and you want them to pull water and essentially just run your jugs all up or down the creek channel tonight, right? Yeah, I mean, I want them, I want them to fall into the channel when they start pulling the water because that's when the fish start biting. Are you put, uh, we putting them out over the channel right now? Uh, we right on the edge of it. Right. But when they pull, it'll pull it into that channel. Yes, sir. Now how far, if they pull water good tonight, how far are these jugs gonna go? Or could uh, they go? They can go from one end of the lake to the other in a matter of hours. No kidding. I've had them go to the dam from here. Wow. And that's a lot, I mean, that's, we're, we're a long way from the dam. Is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> we can I mean, cause I mean, generally where are we at? We're up here in we Crooked Creek, so Creek. yeah. What you coming after, Andy, buddy? Sir. Uh, Good fish there, huh? About 10. About 10 pounds. Man, only the second jug, two for two, huh? That's the channel. Yeah, we got a hundred and, how many jugs 18. out? 118 jugs, yeah. And we two for two. Fish on this one, yeah. See the jug standing. Watch it. Slow down. This fish is pulling. Oh wow. You want to come to your left. Back up. Ready when you are, bring him up. Wait on me, get him out. Full pound? Yeah. Good eating fish. Yeah. Well, this one got a fish on it here. We know it does. That's why you didn't sleep any last night, huh? Waiting on that, thinking about those jugs bouncing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cut her off. No, you're good. Good, back forward. Wait, Whoa, cut it he went back down. <gasps> so that's what that's we what big on. We got a big one. Sometimes they just <laughs> Wow. He bigger than ten. So I noticed you cut the motor, you do that on purpose so you don't cut that cord, right? Mm -hmm. So you just kinda let him do his thing, huh? And he just pops up. He's bigger than ten. He's bigger than ten, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's gonna beat our big fish so far. Wow. I know there's one over there standing up and that one back and forth. Can't hold it. Still hadn't come up. Bullet. There's more in the channel, too. They can't hold it down a long, long time. This is a big fish. Those big ones sometimes will hold it down five, ten minutes. But no kidding. Look, is that one out there? That's a duck. Oh. I just seen a spot. This is when the fun begins right here. When yeah. we hold it down like this, we know he's a man. Yeah. Because sometimes we'll go past them and then we'll be like, we checked this area and then there's one sitting there. Oh, because they had it down. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's a fish on that one over there by the seawall. Yeah, hey, there he is right there. There he is, Kelly. Where? Okay. Kelly, get your dog. Pull it. Pull it. Oh, wait. Hold on. Just ease up there. He's down again. Got it off. 
Wow. This is the ones we like to see when we're in the tournament. Yeah, right. And you're talking about the the Brandon Key catfishing yes, tournament. Sir. Yeah. And y'all actually won it last year. Yeah, we got lucky. Uh huh. Uh, it looks like to me you kind of know what you're doing out here. Well, we've caught a fish or two. Yeah. <laughs> that don't always mean a big fish would bite. Oh, oh. Oh, is he back up? Back up. How big is he going to be? Man, that's the exciting part, right? Yes. Yeah, you can't see it. Yeah. Here we go, she got him. Now we're gonna see. You don't feel so big, you just, I don't know. The anticipation. Can't help oh, he's a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get in the water. Straight up on him. Wow, wow, good fish. Good fish. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. What's he weigh, Jonathan? I'm going to say he's pushing 20. Wow, that's a good fish. Caught on Miss George's fresh gizzard shad from last night. Wow, great. Let's get a photo of that fish, Jonathan. Nice. That's why you didn't sleep last night right there, huh? Won't wait to see one stand up. Here we go. We got Jonathan, good fish, huh? Yeah, about a 10 pounder. So Jonathan, we talked about this last night a little bit, but um, so we set out 118 jugs last night. Yes, sir. Back at the house by about 11:15. Got started at dark. And now these, you were telling me a little bit about you set all these in the in kind of the edge or in the in the creek channel, and you just let the current take them all night. Yes, sir. And they ended up. They, they kind of ended up all in about the same area up here. They actually went. Yeah, they didn't pull water last night, so they just sort of drifted around all night. Yep. Usually they'll pull water and it'll go farther, but these went, what, half a mile maybe? Yes, sir. About a half a mile. And so I was looking at your operation here, and uh, you, you said something a minute ago about how, yeah, yeah, see, this is, uh, there you go. You see all that? So you said it's, of course, you do it for the love of it, but this is work, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> this is not your, this ain't your typical just... Uh, fun work. Fun work, fun work. But you got a lot of time invested in all these noodles you made here, and you got a big cooler for fish, and it takes a family to, to come out here. You got your boat driver and your daughter up there catching the fish, and you working the jugs, and so... I mean, it, it, you can't do it by yourself. Right, you got to have a good group that wants to do it and, and is good at doing it, right? Yes, sir. Got to learn how to work as a team. Yeah, right. And I see y'all. I've just kind of stayed out of the way watching you, but y'all got your rhythm down, and it seems to work really, really well. If you want to come out here to Sinclair, I guess it'll work on Oconee too, or really about anywhere. If you want to just catch numbers of catfish, you know, I know there's a lot of talk. Some people use live bait for the flatheads and all this, but if you just want to come out here and catch sheer numbers, cut bait is, is your deal, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Just about anything you put on the hook. It just, yeah. yeah well, you said you, you've been to the coast and brought back pogies in Menhaden, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Finger mullet. Finger mullet? Finger mullet was a good choice. And we actually caught a lot of fish on cigar minnows. Okay. Uh, just stuff we brought back, you know, when we went down to the coast fishing. Yeah. And I think it's the oily uh, stuff in the bait yep. you know, that attracts the catfish. The, the few times that I've jugged and been jugging, we would go up and down the lake and set them every 50 feet and keep going. But you you actually put them all together last night, which I thought was interesting. T tell me why you do that. Uh, I mean, to me, the more bait you can get in one location, is, you know, it's like chumming the fish, you know. They, 
you know, they're going to come in there when they smell that bait. You know, I like to keep them tight. You know, they're going to spread out there at night anyway, but that, you know, focuses all that sand in one area. Kind of similar to running the chum line for sharks, you know, yes, sir. having it in the same area. Yeah, and I'd never thought about that, but that was that was a good analogy. Yeah, that, that's a that's a running fish right there. Yeah. And we got a fish under. What's those magic words, Kelly? We like to hear. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, I was thinking, cut the motor. Cut, cut the, the motor off. off. Yeah. That means he's gone down. Then we want to hear fish on. Yeah. Cut the, motor. cut the motor and fish on. So we got two fish on. All right, y'all hold on. Got him. She's got him. Bill's heavy. Bill's heavy. Oh, we may have a good one here. Oh, uh, she's struggling. She's struggling. Oh, he's good one. See his tail. Solid 15. These ones that get on right at daylight have a little more life. Some of these fish got on last night and they done got wore down. But when they get when you get that daylight bite, some of these fish are a little more aggressive. You were telling me last night there's a good bite at midnight usually. Yes, sir. And then right at daylight. Yes, sir. When they start pulling water, usually around midnight two in the morning. Give them a good bite and then that daylight bite. I know how it is. It's to hard to see people. an end on an awesome morning, huh? No. Look at there, look at there. Hey, good Friday, good father-daughter. Morning right here on the water for sure. So, it takes a lot of work, Jonathan, but it ain't rocket science. Put the work in, get you some cut bait, yes, and uh, yeah, that's production fishing right there. Uh, man, I appreciate you.